Right, it's time now for our second speaker. And uh, yeah, we're in the, the States. We're still uh, we're in the States, but we're going to be on the, the East Coast to meet Edel Rodriguez now. now. Edel cut his teeth in the creative world during a 14-year stint at Time magazine as an art director. Since then, he's become one of the most famous illustrators in the world, using his sharp eye and succinct style to create witty and satirical depictions of world leaders from Donald Trump to Chairman Mao. You'll instantly recognize his work from the covers of international magazines and newspapers, including Newsweek, The New Statesman here in the UK, Der Spiegel, and of course, Time itself. He even designed a cover for our magazine, Printed Pages, not too long ago. But Edel is not simply a, an illustrator. He actually studied painting in New York before he entered the editorial world and has exhibited work all over the world from Latin America to Europe to the US. And on top of all that, he's managed to write a couple of children's books as well. Um, yeah, quite an amazing career. I'm delighted to say that Adele is, is joining us from, from New Jersey, I believe. Um, is that right, Adele? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Great Thanks to see for having you. Me. It's yeah. great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. An amazing background as well you've got there. <laughs> yeah, it's a painting and I figured it's, uh, it's better than my dirty, you know, <laughs> messy studio. <laughs> Well, you're putting me to shame with my, my boring white wall. But anyway, yeah. um, we've got uh, just just like with, with our friends from Ta Sharp Type there, um, you're not going to be giving us a talk this evening. Instead, I get to ask you lots of questions. And again, our audience does as well. So just another reminder to everyone at home, if a question comes to mind, please do pop it in the chat and um, I'll try to ask it before our time is up. But um, Adele, I guess to start with, I, I mentioned in the introduction that you studied painting and then you went on to be an art director at Time magazine. I guess just what what do you think working for such a kind of prestigious international publication taught you about imagery and, and the power of illustration in particular? Well, what 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 it um, what it taught me is that it really um, how much impact it can have. You know, uh, when I started working at Time Magazine, I, I my first job was basically entry level designer, and then I uh, started you know hanging out with the uh, cover um, uh, art director and and. Um, Basically, you know, trying to uh, figure out what what makes a, a strong, uh, sharp cover, and um, sometimes it's it literally comes down to cropping correctly. You know, something as basic as cropping uh, an image uh, the right way. Um, I learned that we we would do fifteen or twenty covers. It wasn't just one a one off thing. So you're you're constantly rethinking, trying another, and you're you're just going like that until the final deadline. And it's this idea of, of that a cover is never quite finished until it's published. You know, when it's published, that's when it, that's when it counts. Um, so this idea of, of trying out um, um, a lot of uh, versions and and um, and also that that, that um, how a magazine cover of, of that stature can affect the conversation. You know, um, it goes out to millions of people. It's perhaps seen by billions. You know, because it lands on television and stuff like that. So I, I do um, see magazine covers as, as a uh, sort of a communication tool and, um, and, and setting a certain agenda of what to talk about and, and what, what a country or, um, you know, in design world, what designers talk about, you know, they, whatever's on the cover, it's, it's sort of like, um, it's the big deal, you know. So uh, I, I, I'm always aiming for the covers because I, um, and, you know, book covers too, because I really do think they have a, a lot of power um, by just being in front of people, you know. Absolutely. I guess it's worth saying as well that at the time you're obviously handling photography. Some of those covers are very graphic. So it wasn't just illustration. I guess that's another kind of way that you were learning about the impact of imagery. Yeah, I, I think that what, what I mean, and it humbles you as an artist because you, you, you're like, I have a great, you know, artistic idea. I got, I got a great graphic, a great painting. And then in comes the photo editor with an amazing photograph, right? And you just go, all right, I'm done. I, 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 I lose this round. And you have to kind of uh, be a, a sort of a neutral judge and go, what is going to have the greater impact? What tells the story um, in, in the best way? Um, and, uh, and also by working at Time Magazine, I learned uh, about the inner workings of, of, of a magazine and, and it, how illustrators sort of um, uh, market their work. Uh, how they um, reach out to art directors, things like that. So even though I I, I went to I went studied at Pratt Institute, I studied painting and and I worked at the school newspaper there. I mean, I really, you know, it, that was my you know, a new school for me. I basically every day I was learning something new about being an illustrator, and uh, and uh, being a communicator. Very very interesting. Um, 
I guess just to kind of yeah go through your career, do you have a sense of of a big turning point um, in your illustration career? Was there one kind of commission that really changed things for you? Um, I guess I'm also I'm kind of talking about you know how you were perceived by others, but also how you kind of perceived yourself as an illustrator as well. Uh, you know, I think it's it's hard to think of one specific one because the, 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 what I try to tell other illustrators and even students that it is becoming an artist, becoming an illustrator is this very slow, you know, like little wins, little, you achieve this, then you achieve the next little thing. So that's how it works. You know, you kind of do your, your entry level thing and then you, you, you progress to the next. But I'd say one of the biggest things for me was when I, my work first started getting published in the New Yorker magazine. And that was pretty much about, uh, you know, I don't know, like six months out of, out of my university, I, I took my portfolio there and I didn't get any response. <laughs> you know, I checked the portfolio to see if there was anything in there. Nothing. I, I went uh, again, I dropped it off. Uh, actually I sent something in the mail and I, I got it back two weeks later, you know, saying, thanks for sending these, but we don't need them. Thank you. <laughs> and then I went back again with my portfolio. And then, uh, and then I got a call from, uh, um, uh, Owen Phillips, who was an art director there and gave me my first assignment for the New Yorker, which was to go to, um, uh, uh, an art installation and draw it basically. And they were featuring the art installation and, and used it, used my drawing with it. And that, you know, I did the job, it worked out. And then the next week he's like, Hey, can you go to a Broadway show and do a Broadway show? I'm like, yeah. So I, you know, I go and watch a free Broadway show for a couple of hours. That worked out then followed by a movie review to, you know, so in the end, I think I've done about, you know, 400 or 500 illustrations for the New Yorker in, you know, 30 years, but it really just started from that first break from an art director that, you know, um, liked my work. I like this past year, I did a cover for the New Yorker. So, um, what, what the New Yorker did is that it, it, it just, it gives you kind of a, like a, a stamp of, you know, you're good. <laughs> And then everybody right. sees you, everybody sees you differently. Everybody sees your work differently. So it, it leads to a Broadway, you know, from a little Broadway illustration in the New Yorker leads to a Broadway poster commission by a producer. Um, and, uh, so, so it just started a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, work for me by being in there. Um, so I, I would, I would probably say being in the New Yorker definitely helped. Yeah, it's amazing to hear how much of a kind of holy grail it's been for, for so long for, for illustration yeah. um, to, to get into that magazine. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying about it kind of snowballing your career. It, it makes a lot of sense. And I think that's still how it, how it works a lot of the time now. Um, yeah, I, th I, think that's, I think that students see you as you're doing these big projects and they're like, why can't I do that? You know, <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand. I have drawers of <laughs> tiny little things that, you know, uh, little spots and things like that, you know, in the New York Times or, or other smaller magazines. And that's part of uh, being an illustrator is, is racking up experience, basically. Um, this is a slightly tangential topic, but maybe it does kind of fit in because this was obviously a time before social media and a time before Instagram. Do you think it's it's easier now to be to be noticed than back then when you were going in with your portfolio and having it sent back to you time and time again? Or um, do you think there's a kind of difference to, to the way it works now? Um, you know, I think it's, um, it, it, it depends, you know, like it's, it is easier. You can, you know, I mean, I, I know people, um, that, uh, my students get on, on social media and they start tagging their work, boom, boom, you know, it starts creating uh, work for them. But at the same time, the difficulty is that there are thousands upon thousands of people doing the same thing. <laughs> so right. you don't have that, that edge of walking into a place and going, hi, I'm here. I made it to New York city. I'm in your office. Will you give me a job? And I think that um, when when you're in certain places, New York, London, you know, I'm sure Paris, other places like that, the people that are looking face that are meeting you face to face, they look at your portfolio, they 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 appreciate that you took the effort to come see them, and they're like, okay, let me see what I can do. I'll I'll call you next week. That personal connection, um, I think, is 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 great. Uh, meeting someone at an opening or meeting someone at a at an industry event. I think that um, always uh, helped me in, in one way or another. Um, whereas now, you know, you're 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 in, in, in the what it does do though is and it has done is um, it opens up the world to you. You know, so I was mostly kind of a New York illustrator or United States illustrator, and now I've gotten 
work from, you know, I, I do a lot of work for Germany, a lot of work for Asia, um, in, you know, Paris. I never know. I mean, like, like my work now is maybe like half international and half um, in the U.S. And um, uh, people worldwide didn't really know how to find me even, you know, 20 years ago. So I think that's definitely changed, uh, and um, I like it. I, so I, I like to travel places. <laughs> <laughs> it, it opens that's up good. opportunities for conferences overseas and things like that. So I, I, I do like how, how international the whole um, industry has become. And it just, I mean, I guess we're looking at a Dash Beagle cover here. Um, working in different, in different countries, different languages is interesting as well because it presumably presents a new challenge as an illustrator that, that you can't necessarily be pairing it up with a headline that you know what it's going to say. It has yeah. to kind of speak without any text or at least any text that you're going to necessarily be able to read or understand. Yeah. People's, you know, I'm, I'm often asked like what, you know, about the simplicity of my work. I mean, I do like simple work that's direct and communicates clearly. I've always liked working that way, but the, the international aspect sort of like heightens it up even more. You know, I'm not just communicating to Americans, when I'm doing a magazine cover, I'm communicating to people that don't speak English. So I have to, to communicate with the, with the image. There's no, um, you know, there's no cartoon with the little thing. This is, this is what this means. This is what that means. Um, I have to, I have to condense it and, and, and have people in Brazil understand what I'm saying. People in, 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 you know, Germany, Japan, whatever. So um, there's a lot more writing on the image and, and responsibility, but I, I actually do enjoy that. Uh, I enjoy communicating, you know, to, you know, I grew up uh, with a family of farmers, people that, you know, they went to like fifth or sixth grade and then that's it. They, they didn't go, they went to work, you know, that's where, that's my family. And I like to be able to communicate to people like that with an image and then someone that is, you know, um, a, a design guru that has studied, has a PhD in, in whatever, you know, and that when you get those two sides, look at an image and go, wow, I love that. You know, that's really exciting to me. I, I don't like making images for people uh, that like me that are like very sophisticated in the art world and know every painter or whatever. I really do get a kick out of uh, the idea that a magazine cover is kind of, um, for people for like, you know, there's people going to work and things like that. Um, you don't have to go into a gallery to look at a magazine cover or a poster. Um, that's really interesting and attractive to me. So they're, they're like the, the two sides of, of, of being an artist is communicating to yourself and people in your world, but also communicating to the public. Um, uh, and I, 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 I've always had a, a love for, you know, what makes something extremely popular? <laughs> I know that a lot right. of artists are like, well, that's too popular. I don't, I don't like pop music. I don't, but I'm always like, wow, that it's actually really hard to, to make something that makes a mark in society in that way. And, uh, when something does, I have a lot of respect for it, for a pop song or for, um, you know, a work of art that everyone understands, like, you know, Van Gogh's Starry Night or Andy Warhol. Um, things like that. Um, mm. I don't know. The, the punch, I think, is is uh, interesting to me. Definitely. Um, one thing I guess our audience will, will probably know you maybe best for is, is those political illustrations. We've already seen quite a few of them, um, particularly those during the Trump presidency that depicted yeah, the former president. Um, I spoke to you about this when, when Trump left office earlier this year, and I think you counted you'd done 25 magazine covers and, and about 150 other illustrations for magazines book covers, online publications of the, the former president. I guess, first of all, I'm keen to hear how you look back on those four years, because it must have been a very creatively rich time, but also, I'm guessing, a personally challenging time as well at, at times. Um, it, it was actually, you know, a, a very difficult time, I think, um, because I took everything extremely seriously. I, uh, I was not having a good time, even though, you know, the images might look like I was really oh, giving it to them or whatever. I was just really uh, a bit anxious about what was happening because I, I actually did take it seriously. I, I thought that our democracy was at stake. I thought the immigrant rights uh, were, you know, going to be a problem. All of this that was born out on January 6th when people attacked the Congress of the United States, it would be like, you know, people attacking parliament in, 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 in London or something. So um, 
I was not, you know, I, I kept tell, asking myself, am I too paranoid? Am I, you know, and, but at the same time, I, I would say, I would tell myself, no, I'm not. This is really bad what's happening. And I kind of saw that at some point this was going to come to a, a head and come to a clash. And, and that's what occurred. So um, um, uh, I, it, it was, it was an intense time because I really woke up every day thinking about, about this issue and trying to confront it in some way and, and trying to see, well, how can I do, you know, take what I'm doing and do even more with it and make it a bigger um, media splash. I really wanted the media to talk about these things. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, when I first started doing these magazines, um, him to be treated like a regular politician with nice photographs on the cover of some magazine, as usual, you know, because I, I felt that that would just legitimize him even more. So it made me feel good that I basically like stole 15 covers from from this guy that that, you know, they would have he would have feel, you know, he would have felt like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that magazine. It gives him more importance, more, it gives a politician like him more legitimacy. When you take someone like that and you treat him as a joke, then the, 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 um, the audience, the people looking at these covers go, wow, why are we treating this guy differently than other politicians? What, what, there must be something really bad about him. And I wanted, that's what I wanted to um, come across. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, very glad that it's all over hopefully, and, and, and hopefully it won't come back. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I guess what has life been like since since Trump left office? I mean, has there been, I guess, thinking about your your kind of career and your creativity, has there been a tangible change in the way that you've approached your creative work since since January this year? Um, I've just gotten more to into my own uh, work, my own paintings, my own uh, you know sculptures, uh, writing uh, writing a book and um, writing another children's book. So. It's just sort of like reset to what my life was like before, where I'm just enjoying right. things more. <laughs> uh, like getting back to, you know, what this is what I really want to do, you know. Uh, I, I actually, I mean, it was kind of um, like, there's a lot of times where I was doing things where like, I don't really want to do this, but I feel like I must do this. I have to do something about this. And it wasn't like, um, I, uh, it wasn't like my, I, my ideal working situation to like, do something really fast and put it out there. I like to take more time with my work. Um, but I felt like, like there wasn't enough being said. Um, the, some artists were doing work about it, but not very conf in a very confrontational manner. And I, I wanted to, I felt like there was a vacuum there and I wanted to, to fill it. So I kind of took a break from my, um, regular things. I also traveled a lot to do lectures and to do, talks and shows to kind of expand uh, that work. And now I have a lot more free time, especially due to COVID, I wasn't traveling that much. So um, I'm just focusing more on, on like having fun in the studio again, you know? That's great. I'm, I'm pleased to hear it. Yeah, very pleased to hear it. Yeah. Um, I guess you, you talked about this as well, you and your, how your illustration practice is often described as kind of um, simplistic or not simplistic, but maybe yeah, very, very efficient and, and economical. Um, you do very much kind of strip everything unnecessary away until we as a kind of as a viewer are left with something very essential. Um, I'm curious to hear what your process is like, because I think I'm, I'm pretty confident that in our audience tonight, there will be, um, yeah, quite a few illustrators. So what's the process for getting to that, that point of kind of clarity and, and efficiency? Well, I mean, there's, there's two ways to go about it. No, the first one is the magic idea that pops into your head clean and clear and you're like ah <laughs> that happens once in a while but the <laughs> second way is 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 sketching is intense sketching like you, you do something um it, it's too much you do another sketch where you you clean it up a bit more you 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 get to the essence then you're like no i can i can do more and 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 i mean some of my poster uh i just did a film poster that in the end looks very, very simple for the, um, the Joel Cohen movie of tragedy of Macbeth is just a little icon, but I think I, I must've done like, uh, 40 sketches for that, you know, much more complex, more. And, and it is, is that, 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 that endless search for that magic, um, magic image. Um, so, um, I, you know, I think it, it is that, and then, and sometimes even when you do finish it, you're like, well, what if I just take 
this bit away or this bit away to kind of condense it and and have it uh, be even more even more direct. Um, and there are times when I you know I, I've shown something to say my mom or something. She's like, "That's it." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, that's it." And uh, or my kids. <laughs> But I know that it's going to communicate, you know, to to other people or to um, you know a wider public, um, and I and I and I know that someone that looks at something so simple doesn't know the entire background that went into it. Um, but I I do think that that is um, it's, it's a way that I like to communicate in a very simple manner and and, and kind of like get rid of excess uh, at times. I guess there's also a balance though, right? Because you can remove stuff too much and then you're left with something that doesn't have the legibility that you need it to have as an image. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you ask yourself, why is this there? Or does this have to be there? And your answer is, yes, it has to be there. Then it stays. If it doesn't, you know, there's no purpose for it. And this is something that I try to teach to my, uh, my students, you know, at SVA where I teach a class, I, I just ask, why is this here? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, then take it out. You know, there, I, I want there should be a purpose to to what what's uh, what's in a picture. I mean, we can we can have things that are decorative, but then the whole thing has to have a decorative kind of vibe. Um, but if if you're trying to communicate an idea, you know, whatever the image you're looking at right now, and I and I put a lot of decoration in the background, you're going to lose that connection between the, the between two things. Um, and by adding too much decoration, you're just distracting the viewer into some other world on the concept so interesting sorry we just lost you for a second there but i think i think you're back now adele so all okay good. um i'm sure you're very sick of talking about trump so only one more question on this and then we will move on i promise but um i'd just be really interested to hear you describe what it's like drawing the former president because i can imagine there's quite a challenge there because it's so recognizable it could potentially makes it fun and difficult at the same time and I guess, yes, yeah, what, what's the comparison between drawing him versus other world leaders? Uh, well, I mean, he, he is kind of a walking character himself. You know, the, 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 everything he does is kind of a, 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 a sort of a, uh, an icon or a, 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 a mold of evil. <laughs> so you kind of just go, OK, I'm just going to I actually just show what I see. I don't really, ex you know, I, I, I would take just Oh, he did that. Okay, I'm sure it and and do a little riff on it, but it, it's not that far fetched. But in in terms of the the likeness or the drawing of, of him is like I, I just I wanted um, to uh, to just not really you know I didn't put any eyes on the guy because I I didn't want them to, I don't want you to have any connection to you. Know, usually when you put eyes on people, you have a connection or something. I just wanted it to be a stand in for. Um, um, bad ideas and 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 just a, a, a you know horrible sort of uh, um, um, personality and and I felt like if I just strip it down to to some of the basics like you know this uh, hood and tie um, it, it just has a lot more power than if I were to do oh he's so big and you know like I never made him huge and fat or anything I don't gonna there's no joy in that I don't I don't nobody should be drawn fat unnecessarily. So um, I just um, went straight for the idea. I had I, I didn't want any have any beef with hair or, or um, uh, how someone looks. It was more about what the person stood for. And if you look at most of my drawings, they're always about what he was doing or what he stood for and how dangerous it was. And that was my, my main focus of it. Interesting. Yeah, it was, wasn't focused on kind of, yeah, physical attributes in the same way. Um, no, and, and I actually saw drawings was. like I, I saw drawings like that during these times, and I'm like, why? Why are you going to go there? I mean, it just puts you sort of on the same level as as him in terms of being uh, over disgusting or whatever. And and uh, I think there are, you know, most of my work is just very. Uh, maybe that's why it hits or it connects. It's very serious, and it's very about what's what's at stake. It's not about just trashing someone. Definitely. Um, we've had a really interesting question come through from from the audience. Um, do you have a cover that was a mistake but came to be a blessing? So I guess a, a cover that you, yeah, maybe weren't happy with. I guess is the is the subtext there. Uh, a cover that oh. was a mistake but then came to be a blessing. Um, I mean, 
don't know if it was a mistake, but uh, the blessing, you know, like the 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 um the cover of Trump beheading the Statue of Liberty started off somewhere else. It was an image that I had done, you know, uh, about uh, two years earlier. I had I had done an ISIS fighter covering off, cover, uh, cutting it off his own own head because it was um, I was I was doing a similar campaign against ISIS and against what was going on in Syria. So um, I kind of just slapped something together. I took the old image and put the Trump head on it and uh, just out of anger. <laughs> and, um, and then that took off and it became, you know, this worldwide known image. So um, not necessarily a mistake, but, it, but it's sort of a, a, um, a, 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 way that you you can easily you can just take something that you've done and kind of do a little bit to it or change it and something that's your own and it becomes something else i find that really interesting um some of my students or other illustrators i know they, they feel they always have to come up with something completely new and i'm always just incrementally kind of um uh advancing on things or doing something it's something that i i read from jasper johns the american painter was that his work is not always reinventing anything. It's always taking something, doing something to it, doing something to it again. And that every time at every stage, it changes meaning. So his, his first American flag painting in wax, then he did you know three flags on top of each other. Then he elaborated on the flag. So I think that um, that's one way I like to work is, is kind of like having a conversation with my own work and my own uh, paintings and, and, and drawings and seeing where that conversation goes. Interesting. Um, we have another question from, from the audience, from, from Olivia. When you talk about sketches, which you mentioned earlier, do you work primarily with a sketchbook and pencil, or do you kind of immediately work digitally straight away? No, I work on paper. I like paper a lot. Um, I, I do things digitally, um, you know, in Photoshop, uh, but they're all based on drawings. Um, uh, or text textures that I do for my paintings. These that are now on the screen right now, these are all painted with acrylic on paper. Uh, so I paint a lot. My work is about, you know, half half finished in, in paint and the other half may be finished uh, digitally. So all of my sketches are, are pencil on paper. I, I always just like real things around me. Um, <laughs> they're just easy to flip through. You know, I can carry them with me. I don't trust the computer. To, you know, I always think the computer is going to just suck everything I <laughs> and I don't, I don't completely trust it. So I, I love having things on paper. And the other thing about working in the real world or with real materials is that I'm always discovering something new that is not on the computer. So I, you know, for, for a while, I, I had some cigar boxes in my studio. I started painting in the cigar boxes, something which is not in Photoshop. Um, another time I was drinking coffee and I'm like, well, if I, what if I start painting with this coffee instead of paint? And I did a whole series of drawings with coffee. You don't have coffee in Photoshop. So, um, I also sand a lot of my work. We're using sandpaper, which is uh, to get a bit of grittiness. Can't do that in Photoshop. So I, I, I can get a little frustrated with, with digital things. And also that, that even if, if I have in Photoshop, I have 2000 brushes, I'm limited by those 2000 brushes backyard i cut off a twig and i start inking something with a twig um, because i feel that that handmade quality and that roughness is something that i'm always looking to add to my work great um adele we, we, your connection's slightly dodgy so we're going to just go probably one more question if we can manage it okay. um wh what are you working on right now i guess you mentioned the um yeah you, you've done the artwork for that apple originals film of macbeth which looks amazing um is there anything else coming up that you'd like to mention or let us know about yeah what i've been working on for uh the last um, couple of years is a memoir uh an illustrated graphic memoir uh of my life growing up in cuba coming to america and then the last three to four years uh all the different things that have occurred so that's it's about 300 pages uh written and illustrated by me and it, it'll come out uh, next fall uh, fall of 2022. Amazing. Cannot wait for that. That will be incredible. Um, Adele, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for your, for your time this afternoon. Um, it's been incredible. Really nice speaking to you. Thank you. Thanks.